بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته I am Dr. Osama Sultan, consultant hematologist in King Fahd Hospital University. I will give you today a physical examination about the uh, sickle cell disease. So in, when we examine sickle cell disease, we look to general examination of the patient. We look for his general build. Usually they are close to their normal sibling, but in some cases, in some of the patients like uh, sickle cell thalassemia, they may have, they may be shorter than their sibling. To look to the uh, distress, which is a pain distress, and this will tell you the site of pathology. For instance, you have a patient can have pain in the chest, might be acute syndrome, is it complaining from the limb pain might be an acute painful episode in the uh, in the pain in the pain in the leg itself or the other thing is respiratory distress which might indicate an acute syndrome uh, or uh, any respiratory cause of respiratory failure uh, like pneumonia severe pneumonia or severe bronchitis or severe bronchitis acute bronchitis then look for the connections connections will be and to the uh, air, for instance, oxygen mask or oxygen uh, nasal cannula. And here we have to look for the patient has hypoxia. Hypoxia in sickle cell patients is that if it is saturation of the oxygen less than 92%, uh, which indicate a respiratory compromise. The other thing also connections look for the uh, fluids, which is for IV fluid. And here you have to look for the, the uh, type of IV fluid and how, much, how many cc per hour is the IV fluid running. And also to look for the blood products, whether it is in, uh, in blood product, for instance, packed red cells or the uh, uh, fresh frozen plasma or platelets concentrate. Also look for the uh, connections, medications, antibiotics, opioid analgesics or non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs which is given parenterally or to look for the opioid analgesics which is given on uh, through a machine called uh, the uh, patient uh, controlled analgesia. The other thing also to look for the precaution signs which is the, the sign which can be seen in the, uh, in the beside this patient for instance contact precautions because of the bacteria or because of the contact precautions for the, uh, the uh, body fluids like hepatitis B or C because of the uh, patient, some of the patients they may receive a lot of uh, blood transfusion or multiple blood transfusions. The other thing also to look for pallor and pallor in sickle cell disease patient to look for the palmar pallor and conjunctival pallor. pallor which may indicate anemia and uh, then to look for the uh, 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 jaundice which might be maybe a hemolytic jaundice or obstructive jaundice and to differentiate from these the two is that the in obstructive jaundice the patient then have deeply jaundice of the sclera as well as in the skin and also they have change in urine, uh, urine color which becomes deeply yellow or close to orange color and also you look for the other signs like scratch marks whereas the hemolytic jaundice will be slightly jaundiced with no change in urine color then to look for skin pigmentation on the areas like especially the, cre the creases or to look for the uh, the areas of like uh, nail or, okay, or, or the face or mucous membranes which is due to the uh, treatment with hydroxyurea or in heavily trans transfused patients or those who are receiving multiple blood transfusions, there will be iron overload. The other thing also to look for cyanosis, usually they will have central cyanosis because of the anterior acute respiratory compromise like respir acute chest severe acute syndrome or then to look for fever. Fever, if it's more than 38.3 degrees in, uh, centigrade indicates an infection 
But sickle cell patients, they tend to have low-grade fever, which is associated with acute crisis. For instance, acute painful crisis or a disorder. We'll come now to hand examination and sickle cell disease patient. Now to come to, to come to hand examination, to look for nails, looking for clubbing, and this clubbing and sickle cell disease patient indicate associated chronic liver disease, and to look for uh, leukonychia, which is can be seen in uh, indicate low albumin, and it is seen in uh, malnutrition which is due to prolonged stay in the ICU or uh, associated renal disease or liver disease. And look for also grayish discoloration of the nails also, which is called melanonychia, which is due to uh, treatment with hydroxyurea. Also, to, uh, to look for the palmar erythema as well as the palmar pallor, which is also stigmata maybe in liver disease or can be seen also normally in pregnant uh, female. To also to look for the uh, other signs of chronic liver disease in the hands. Now we'll come to the wrist examination and uh, and arm. The wrist examination to look for the radial pulse, and we are looking here for the rate, rhythm, and character. The rate will be if the patient sickle cell is patient has bradycardia may indicate a recent opioid dose or patient is sleeping or seen in obstructive, severe obstructive jaundice or uncommonly in patient who has intracranial hemorrhage. The tachycardia to look for also the uh, patient may have associated fever, uh, pain distress or uh, anemia or acute pulmonary embolism. The rhythm, irregular rhythm in sickle cell disease patient it is as, uh, associated with atrial fibrillation usually which is irregular irregular and this is seen in uh, pulmonary embolism or uncommonly or rarely seen in patient who has mesenteric vessel occlusion the character in sickle cell disease patient to look for the the important one is the which is indicate anemia and it's done easily by raising the hand and you feel the collapsing pulse. The uncommonly, the other uncommon character is the paradoxical pulse, which is rarely seen in patient who has massive pulmonary embolism. Also to look for in the arms, to look for the ecchymosis, as well as PTKI, and also muscle wasting, which might be due to the thrombocytopenia and liver disease. Then to look for the lymph nodes generally we are looking all the lymph nodes areas should be examined the here in the arms will be looking for the epitrochial lymph nodes examination of the also uh, of the sh of the uh, axillary lymph nodes ideally should be the patient undressed but will be seen the upper lip head and neck examination of sickle cell this patient look for the face for thalassemic facies or they call it chipmunk face and this is associated with sickle cell thalassemia and not all present. Those are frontal posing, maxillary prominence, lifting of the upper lip and the disruption of the upper teeth, then also the small jaw and narrow face. So this will be characteristic thalassemic features. Look to the eye for conjunctival pallor, look up, and also look for the scleral jaundice, look down, okay. Then look for the also retinopathy by examination by ophthalmoscope to look for the uh, signs of uh, sickle cell uh, retinopathy, which is, for example, retinal detachment, infarcts, or proliferative type of retinopathy. And this is seen in patient who is sickle cell hemoglobin C disease. Look to the mouth for cyanosis. Also examine for tonsils enlargement or 
throat congestion. Then examine for cervical lymphadenopathy, deep and superficial, and look for the jugular venous pressure, which is increased in case of in case of fluid overload, massive blood transfusion, right side heart failure, and also to look for the also carotid pulsations and suprasternal pulsation, which might be seen in hyperdynamic circulation that indicate any chest infection. Examination of the chest and back for signs of chest infection, such as pneumonia or uh, acute bronchitis and also to look for the signs of liver stigmata of liver disease in the chest such as gynecomastia, spider nevi and also to look for the back so examine the back for the chest tenderness over the ribs vertebrae and also to look for the tenderness over the loin for the signs of violent fright Examination of the heart, looking for the apical impulse for apic, the diffuse hyperdynamic apex, which might indicate anemia. Looking for the left parasternal heave and look for palpable P2. The left parasternal heave and palpable P2 indicates the pulmonary hypertension. Then auscultate the heart. Typically, we are looking for the ejection systolic murmur which is located in the second left intercostal space and this indicates a flow murmur which indicates 